Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Crem News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Good to have you with us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Jane is off today. Well, fire crews told us the Highway 243 fire in Grant County could be fully contained wow. by tomorrow. A new check of the area today revealed that fire burned more than 18,000 acres. Reports show the fire is now 25% contained. Fire crews say their number one priority is keeping the community safe, so evacuations are still in place. Yeah, level three evacuations are in place for Smyrna. That means residents must be out as they are in immediate danger. Level two evacuations include Beverly, Shawana, and Wanapum Village. That means residents should be ready to leave at a moment's notice. So far, we are told at least two people suffered minor injuries. Nearly 400 personnel from all across the state are now fighting the fire. Two helicopters and two small planes are also part of those firefighting efforts. Right now, we do not know the cause of the fire. But we do want to say thank you to all those firefighters out there for fighting that fire. Crews from around the state rushed in to help. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley learned today that some of them could be going home as early as tomorrow. Amanda? Guys, and coming down here earlier today, I mean, gosh, the smoke has cleared away for the most part. We're seeing it look much better than it did yesterday, but officials here are saying even though you're not seeing much smoke, it's still dangerous. Right now, crews are out focusing on putting out those hot spots. So take a look at this video from earlier today. We got a closer look at helicopters doing some bucket drops out there. They, there were a couple of planes out in the area as well. Now they were pulling water from a nearby reservoir. Public information officer Ben Shearer says depending on the weather and as long as the wind doesn't pick up, we are starting to feel it pick up a little bit here this evening. They could have the fire completely contained by Friday. Everybody's been out today, all hands on deck, trying to get back out there and get those hot spots knocked down as much as possible. They're expecting this cold front to come in. If it comes in with a lot of wind, we could easily have one of these hot spots jump up and take off again on us. Nobody really likes to work in the rain, but yeah, it's always nice to have. It's, it's a good way to get out of here just a little bit earlier. Now, Shearer says they could start to send crews home tomorrow after breakfast, and this truly speaks to their optimism with getting the wildfire under control. Now, I'm told here at the incident command post here at the city park, they are expecting to meet and get an update from all those team members at about six o'clock. So we're hoping to hear an update on the containment percentage. They are optimistic that that number has gone up from the 25 percent a little bit significantly today, and we'll keep you posted on that. Reporting in Royal City, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Amanda Rowley live in Grant County tonight. Amanda, thank you. Meantime, we are feeling the effects of the fire here in Spokane. Since the start of that fire, our air quality has been fluctuating, and at one point, Spokane had the worst oh air quality my. in the nation. That was last night. Mm. Right now, though, we are currently sitting in the good category at 35. And in Idaho, Sandpoint's air quality is currently in the good range at 20, although it was in the unhealthy for sensitive groups uh, range a little earlier today. St. Mary's is also in the good range, measuring at 37. Well, that wildfire smoke is something that has become the norm during our summer months, unfortunately, but usually we don't see it this early in the season. The Spokane Regional Clean Air Agency says the air in our area reached unhealthy levels. For the last five years, there have only been about 10 days on average in the unhealthy range, and it's why a poor reading this early in the season is concerning for the agency. But we know that wildfires can really occur uh, at any time once we start hitting the dry months. So, uh, but yes, definitely earlier than, than what we have seen in the past. Well, Krem 2's Tim Pham looked into the long-term effects of wildfire smoke. We'll have more on that coming up on Krem 2 News at 5 tonight. In terms of our forecast, right. hoping maybe for some weather to move in to kind of mix up the atmosphere and push the smoke out. I, we saw that last night. The winds uh, became out of the south mm -hmm. rather than from the west, so that kind of cleared us out this morning. And we're also tracking some rain, Mark. Yes, some blessed rain uh, that is falling uh, out in areas of central Washington especially. Uh, so this is down kind of like what we're talking about where the 243 fire is. So a little bit of shower activity, at least in the area. We've got a little bit of light sprinkle activity in the Spokane region. We talked about this being a possibility tonight. Uh, there's a look at the fire, as you can see, uh, and it's not nearly as warm and not nearly as windy. We had winds out of the west gusting up to 22 miles an hour. Now we see wind out of the south at about four miles an hour with a gust to maybe 10. So that's really helping, and it's not as hot. Temperatures were in the 80s this time yesterday. Now they're in the mid 70s. So when we look at your day plan or forecast, look for increasing clouds with chance of showers overnight. Windy overnight. Uh, we'll look for 
cooler with a chance of rain at times, not all day long, but obviously those cooler temperatures, a daytime high of 59 degrees expected. Here's a look at your weekend forecast. We'll continue with cloudy skies and a, about a 50 50 shot of rain on Saturday. Sunday, though, looks like it's going to be nice, mostly sunny and seasonal. We'll look for a daytime high of 72 degrees. Mm, that would be kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Man, wouldn't it be nice if they got some rain in Grant County to kind of knock down? Just those knock points? it down, let every, all those firefighters go home and oh. uh, have a, a quiet summer. Yeah, fingers crossed for that. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> well, we have an update now in the search for a missing 24 year old woman. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office says they found a woman's body inside her apartment. However, at this point, they're not identifying mm -hmm. that person. 24 year old Arezu Kashifi was last seen on May 25th. Her husband bought a one way ticket out of the country on May 28th. The Sheriff's Office is looking to speak with anyone who has information on Wahid Kashifi. That's the husband. Detectives are now investigating this as a homicide, they say. The Spokane County Medical Examiner's Office is working to identify the body and a cause of death. Well, the measles is spreading. One case of the virus has been confirmed now in Latok County. Idaho public health officials made that announcement today. Our Whitney Ward joins us now with more on what health officials are saying. Whitney? Good afternoon. Yeah, this is actually the first confirmed case of measles in Idaho this year. One person with measles was identified at the Gritman Medical Center in Moscow. Now, staff say they immediately recognized the symptoms and were able to take quick action. We're not sure, though, where the patient has actually been and if the measles virus is still present in the area. That remains to be seen. Now, this is just one of the many measles cases all all around the country. Here in Washington, there are at least nine confirmed cases. All of them are in western Washington. Some of those patients, though, had been traveling through SeaTac Airport, a very easy way to spread the disease to other parts of the country. Now, before that outbreak, 71 cases were confirmed in Clark County. Public health officials worked to contain that outbreak for six weeks. It was finally declared over in April, but those cases motiva motivated lawmakers to tighten the state of vaccine exemption laws. Right now, a total of 26 states across the U.S. have been affected. Now, if we include Idaho's most recent case, that brings the total number of cases across the country to 982. That is the most reported in the U.S. since 1992. Measles was actually declared eliminated in this country in 2000, but public health experts are now afraid that if measles cases continue to pop up, our country could actually lose that status. And if that that would be a huge blow for our nation as a whole. So according to CDC records, a majority of actually people who have been infected do not have vaccination records. They are unvaccinated. That's why doctors across the country are urging everyone to get that MMR vaccine. It's 93% effective after one dose, 97% effective after two doses. Tom, Mark. Wow, thank you for that good information, Whitney. Mm -hmm.